Nick here, Revis this Customs. Today we're going to have a look at some of our parts for our DYZE water cooled build. So we start off with our power supply here, nothing fancy, 12 volt, uh, 10 amp output, which should be more than enough to power everything, nice and compact as well. Uh, for our radiator, we've picked up a Freeze Mod 120mm radiator. Uh, link is in the description if you want to have a look at this. Uh, we also picked up just a cheap little 120mm fan to go with it, that's PWM. And as you can see, we've made up a little um, mount here printed in carbon nylon uh, just to make it a little bit easier so you can mount it flat to a block of wood when we come to this stage of having everything ready to go together and this is our little pump here from freeze mod once again uh, PWN controlled uh, it's got a temperature readout on the front which will be handy to have a look to keep an eye on what it's doing uh, this is the included rubber mount and then we've just made a little printed mount here which will bolt straight to a flat piece of wood once again just keep it nice and secure and hopefully remove some of the vibration. We then move across to our fan controller. Now we picked up one of these units and then discovered that only one of these outputs is actually PWN controlled. Uh, this is all through it here. There's a lot of adjustment you can do on when it turns on, when it turns off and what percentage. So we ended up picking up two so we can run one could be the fan, one could be the pump. And then it leaves us with another four extra fans if we need to. It's also got a spot for a buzzer, so if your fan drops below, I believe it was 500 RPM or something around that, it'll buzz so you know if your fan's failed or it's running slow for whatever reason. And then these outputs here are your temperature sensors. And we also picked up some of the fittings. Uh, we ended up getting ones these are slightly too small for the tubing that we got, so we have some slightly bigger ones on the way. Same style, they'll do the trick. And we've also got... Some simple little clamps that'll clamp fitting to these um, onto the hosing that we got here. As you can see, it's going to be quite a bit big, but once it's flexed over the fitting, it'll fit really nice. And then we move on to the, some of the DYZE, um, these are the stepper motor um, water blocks. Very nice finish to them. Um, you do have a little bit of option whether you want to pass it through the side or out the top. Uh, we are hoping to put these in all of our extruders, but we believe the Z um, one we may have to do some modification to make it fit. And then this is the one for the hot end itself, which will replace the fan. Once again, you can choose whether you come out the top or out the sides, which makes it routing a little bit easier. Okay, so we came up with a simple little uh, wooden box here. Um, ideally, you would have probably done this in acrylic, but we had wood laying around, so obviously we've got the radiator mounted up the front with a little bit of a fan duct uh, coming in. Uh, we've got our pump here and our power supply and our dual fan controllers. And then at the back, um, a little bit hard to see, we've got two little temperature readouts here. One's gonna be the enclosure and the other one will go into, it's probably into the radiator or something, so easier to monitor the temps. Um, we did have a temp readout on the front of the pump, but uh, it, was, it worked out a lot easier just to mount the pump this way to keep everything nice and clean, so we can't really see that once it's all together turn it around and we've also just done a little simple wooden cover to hide any sort of electrics that are there because the sides are going to be kept completely open. Okay so now next we're going to need to tighten all these fittings down properly, add all the crimps to all the hoses, uh, just tidy up some of our wiring and we're also still waiting on our temperature sensors for this because the stock ones were only about you know they're about lay yay long which is obviously not going to reach and they will fit up into this fitting here which will control our PWM fan and also the pump itself. So it's not always going at 100% because it probably really won't need to. I think this 120mm fan and radiator combo is going to keep it nice and cool. So let's get our crimp, crimp all our fittings on and then we can start moving to the water blocks. Just a note with these, they don't need to be super, super tight. Um, if you flatten the O-rings on them too much, they will leak. So it's sort of you sort of got to get it tight and just that's that's hard to explain but you want it tight but not too tight to flatten the o-ring so sort of you nip them up till you start feeling a bit of pressure and then sort of another quarter of a turn not even that and we'll tighten it all the way same with our pump um, we will be having all of these files listed if you guys want to print something very similar obviously it's not just going to be set to the dyze setup that we're running uh, it's going to be pretty universal, providing that your hose size is the same, but you can get these fittings in different sizes as well. Um, we ordered the wrong size to start with, which were a little bit small. Oh, 
so that's all tight. Um, I also forgot to mention that underneath we also put in a access to the drain plug if you need to drain it. Um, also, a little TPU feed on the bottom. So now we need to get all the hoses run, or what we can inside here. We'll probably leave this one till last, which will be your outlets, the two outlets, should I say, until we know what length we need. So let's get them crimped. Okay, so we've got our hoses uh, crimped up, passed through into the enclosure itself, as you can see there. Uh, we've also added a temperature sensor for the um, temp gauges on the back, and there's also two thermistors here, which will um, control the PWM on the fan controllers. Now, we don't know how well it's going to work with the pump. Even though the pump is PWM, it may set the low um, temp, the low speed warnings off. We'll have to have a play around with the switches. And so that's pretty much it on this side. Okay, so we've got to allow our uh, tubing run to our hot end, as you can see here, to the hot end itself, the, the stepper motor for the extruder. Um, we've tried to keep it so our line in goes straight into these ones, which are going to be the most important to cool. And then they go back out to our other steppers. Uh, so you can see our see our one here for the bed. We've tried to keep this sort of tucks down underneath. So it hopefully it, will, it shouldn't, it won't hit the bed. Uh, we did have to adjust our adjuster knob to clear this little section here. And for our Z, um, we've had to make a new, this little mount here is new. Um, maybe should I get a better photo of that? Because um, obviously it was hitting uh, this part up here. Hopefully you can see this, it's a little bit awkward trying to do this with the enclosure now. Um, so we had to remove that little notch, run another um, slotted piece through here to pick up because obviously there's a self tapped into the frame itself to lift this up so we could fit the block underneath obviously with the bl touch it really has no issues because we don't have to adjust the z height because we've got the bl touch so that was fairly straightforward okay so before anyone asks um, these are what we put on our water loop we do the same on our computer it's just some uh, strips of silver that we got that we coiled up um, we've just put that inside the pump normally we put it inside one of the lines but obviously the lines are a lot smaller we didn't want to restrict it too much, so it's just gone on the pump, which shouldn't cause any issues. And for water, we use this. Um, we've had no issues with it. Others might say something different, but this works for us. So now what we need to do is start filling this with water and start priming the pump. So we've got this little rig set up. Once again, we use this for our little our, um, computer itself. Keep it cool. Just a fitting with a piece of tube and a just a funnel. Okay, so as we thought may happen, uh, we've got the PWN things just kicking off. It's not sucking through the pump, so we're going to have to move it to a different port. It should hopefully suck through. And there it goes. Um, obviously we're still getting the error from the other one because we've um, we haven't disconnected it we've just removed the plug so it still thinks that there's no power so do this a few more times and get it primed up as you can see we've got everything up and running now uh, it took uh, it took a good part of a day to get this all bled out just because of the amount of lines and the extra sort of loop such as here just to ensure that there's slack in the line to allow for movement um, biggest thing we're going to say is that we've noticed that the stepper motor is like you can touch it these geared motors used to get really really warm in a long print um, uh, this is just a time lapse here of a five hour print as you can see you can sort of see what the temp does it does start to balance out so it's sort of you know sort of four to six degrees hotter um, hotter than what the ambient temp was which is your middle gauge and the one on the left was the is the radiator temp and the one on the right is the um, enclosure temp which this is where we've got it sitting right up here at the top so it's going to read the hottest part of the enclosure so it's definitely doing its job we're going to run this a lot more um, next step is we're going to move we're going to move obviously the screen our power supply is still in, in place um, that's going to be all moved external along with our main board which is still down under here so we're, we're very happy with this our next step is to start printing with some you know some peak and some you know carbon peak maybe 
a lot more expensive, but we're going to get some great results from that. So thanks for watching. If you guys want to build one of these, we've got left here the links in the description for our box where you can buy all of the um, parts that you're going to need and everything else. Till then, have a good one.